Hi everyone, and welcome to the first ever Exor Studios vlog. My name is Piotr, I am the community manager. It is Tuesday, the 7th of April. Yes, I had to check the date because it's the fourth week of our home office self-isolation kind of work, so... Um, we are going crazy a little bit, but everything is going to be fine. We are still working on the Rift Breaker, and today I have something to tell you about, and this is a new creature. A creature that you might have seen on our streams, which you totally should visit. Um, they happen every Tuesday and every Thursday at uh, 3 p.m. Central European Summer Time. So, yeah, that's what's happening. Um, so... If you take a look at our games, um, you will notice that we like constructing worlds that are very detailed and very um, believable. Whether it's the uh, apocalyptic wasteland of Diprip, or apocalyptic wasteland of Zombie Driver, or apocalyptic wasteland in the making in Exmorph Defense. Well, uh, and that's uh, starting to become a pattern. We like building worlds that are packed with small elements that add to the immersion. Like you can just jump into those worlds and believe that at some point people did live there. They left in a hurry and something has gone terribly wrong. The purpose of all these little objects like posters, billboards, trash scattered all over the place or fallen streetlights or cars that are just left in the middle of the intersection the point is to make you believe that the world has been alive at some point so in the rift breaker the setting is completely different the planet that we arrive on galatea 37 has never been destroyed by a global cataclysm that we know of and the ecosystems and the biomes, everything is living, everything is thriving. So making the world come alive is something new for us, <laughs> actually. But we are always up for the challenge. There are several things that we uh, have come up with to make Galatea 37 a very lively place. And most of them warrant an article and a vlog of their own. So today we are going to talk about the Quelver. Quelvers! Quelvers. Quelvers are crustaceans. They are small creatures by Galatean standards. They are like half a meter because everything is huge on Galatea. Um, so their body is like ovoid in shape. They resemble sort of an elongated egg. And they have an exoskeleton. And they walk on tiny little legs and there are hundreds of them. Um, so that's nightmare fuel for anyone who doesn't like tiny little legs and crustaceans. Um, they uh, are scavengers. They hunt for organic remains that are on the ground. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, a rotting plant or a fresh cadaver or a rotten cadaver. They will eat anything. So despite their small size, they are pretty fast. So whenever something drops on the ground and is ready to eat, they are going to go for it. If they are threatened, they are going to run away and hide, because they are not prepared to do anything else. They have no protective mechanisms whatsoever, apart from their exoskeleton, so they are completely harmless. So this is just like a little cockroach, right? Why do we need that? Why do we add that? Isn't that just fluff? Actually, even though Quelvers don't attack, Quelvers don't drop any loot. And the most significant thing they are going to achieve in their lives is going to get stomped by Mr. Riggs. They are one of the first things that you notice upon landing. You land and there are, you know, bushes, trees, grass, whatever. And there are also quelvers just skittering around and being quelvers. And you immediately know that there is life here. There is life on Galatea 37. Even such a little creature can impact your feeling of the world. They react to what's happening around them. If you try to build a base where there is a lot of quelvers, they are going to scatter. If you try to catch them, they are going to run as hell. And if you just finish mopping up a wave of monsters, they are going to be there to eat their remains. 
which also lets us um, get rid of the very unattractive magic trick, which is called you see a corpse, you don't see a corpse. So instead we have little creatures just eating everything that was on that corpse. It's certainly more interesting than just dissolving the bodies after a set amount of time. Ambient creatures like this are the bridge between the animate and the inanimate worlds of the Rivebreaker. They are important pieces when you want to turn the mix of just props and AI-controlled creatures into a living world, into a coherent structure. So we can promise you there are going to be a lot more neutral creatures coming your way and coming to the world of the Rivebreaker. And there are going to be a lot of non-neutral creatures. Uh, lots of new enemies are coming your way. So be on the lookout for that and remember to join our streams Tuesday, Thursday, 3 p.m. Central European Summer Time. Summer? Is it summertime? Yes, it is summertime. And uh, join our Discord. And if you have any questions about the Rift Breaker, that's where you can get your answers. Also, since this is the first time we're doing something like this, this is the first time me vlogging, let me know if you like such approach and uh, if you would like to watch more videos like this. So stay tuned, subscribe and like and share, and see you next time.